Another huge upgrade you can do to your race car in all sorts of racing aspects is your braking system. Uh, pretty much every kind of racing you're gonna do is very aggressive on brakes, right? The faster you go into a corner, uh, the faster you're gonna be, so you need those good brakes to help slow you down uh, and get you squared away for your corner. Hey guys, I'm Jared. Uh, today I have a rally car here we can talk a little bit about and you guys can see some of the things we do to make this car last all weekend beating down some dirt roads. So we have a Ford Fiesta ST here. It's a 1.6 turbo car. Uh, we have some other bumpers on it right now just for testing purposes and whatnot, so we can beat on these ones. Uh, but we'll start up front, kind of work our way back talking about the car. Uh, engine bay wise, there's not a lot going on here too different than stock. Uh, we have some upgraded engine mounts and transmission mounts. Uh, we're really just beefing up the things that are likely to break, but uh, engine internal wise, power wise, it's all keeping it nice and stock. Uh, these things make plenty of power. In a front wheel drive car, in a rally world, if you put too much power to the car, you're either gonna spin the tires everywhere or snap axles. So you don't really need a lot of power. I think these things are 190, 200 horsepower stock. Uh, so that's plenty for what we're trying to do here. Uh, so yeah, up front you can see, first thing you're gonna wanna do on a rally car, very important to protect the car, your engine bay, your transmission, everything, is put a big mean skid plate under the car. Uh, so under here you can see we have a quarter inch thick piece of aluminum. Uh, it's sheeting the whole bottom of the engine bay. Uh, right back by the turbo where there's a lot of heat building up, we have a couple holes drilled in to help dissipate some heat, pull some heat out of it. Uh, you can also see that there's some uh, plastic shields here on the side. We're also preventing rocks and gravel from getting sprayed up into the engine bay. We don't want rocks hitting the side of our engine or transmission or potentially uh, damaging the serpentine belt on the engine. These cars, they don't have a very good system for mounting the skid plate in the front. So we had to build a nice frame uh, to support the front of it. And then the back is just bolted up to the subframe. Subarus, they have a nice wishbone shape there that you can already just mount a skid plate up to, welding some nuts on it uh, and be good to go. But this car, since the whole front end is plastic, uh, it required us to make an auxiliary frame to mount that to. You can see up here we have uh, some, some things coming out of the front bumper. This is gonna support our light bar since we're racing at night as well. Uh, when it gets just before dark, we'll actually put a light bar system on the front of this car, light that road up bright, so hopefully we can see like day and we uh, don't have to slow down too much. So we move the washer bottle that is a, a originally right behind the bumper cover here uh, to inside the car behind the back seat because uh, this is a likely area where you can hit a tree or a rock or even the minor off uh, can damage that and now suddenly you don't have any uh, washer fluid, right? And you start getting mud thrown on your windshield. You want to be able to keep that clean. Um, we move a lot of things around based on heat and to simplify uh, how we can work on the car to do our checks during service. We usually only have 15, 20, 30, sometimes 45 minutes to work on these cars uh, between stages and fix anything that could be broken. So the more stuff that's there, uh, the longer it's gonna take. There's a reason why uh, you take this car from the factory and your dealership is charging you four hours to do a certain job that we might be able to do in 20 minutes. Uh, we, we simplify pretty much everything all across the board on this car and make it easy to work on and easy to maintain. So you can also see up front here, uh, we have some wire mesh in front of our radiator. Again, those small offs or even uh, for catching a car on stage or there's rocks or sticks flying around, uh, even minor damage to the front end can push plastic or metal back into our radiator and cause that to leak, which is, not, is gonna end our day. So we don't want that. One thing we do have to keep in mind, whether there's mesh there or not, uh, is we have leaves and mud and everything that is gonna be getting packed up into our radiator. Uh, and we're gonna have to make sure we keep that clean, right? Because if we're preventing airflow into that radiator, uh, our cooling system is gonna be compromised because of it, and this engine is gonna start running hot, and it's not gonna be good. So moving back a little bit, uh, looking at the wheel wells of our cars, we're gonna start to look at some performance things. Uh, one thing we can always start off with is suspension. Suspension is going to be a huge upgrade, and it can be for not too much money sometimes. 
Uh, you can absolutely buy a new shock and it's gonna upgrade your car for $100, $200, or you can go all out and you can spend five, ten thousand dollars on a on a shock upgrade for, for your car. Um, and it's going to be one of your biggest performance advantages. No matter what you have for tires on the car or any other parts, it's not going to matter if your tires aren't touching the ground. Good suspension is going to keep those tires on the ground. Good suspension is going to let you hit stuff faster, hit bigger jumps, uh, be able to brake harder and keep that car planted right on the ground. This has a, a pretty, pretty big upgrade system on it. Uh, this is Riger suspension. There's external reservoirs on it so we can hold more oil. It's very adjustable. We can move our ride height up and down based on the roads we're driving on uh, and, the, and how rough the road is or how smooth the road is. Another huge upgrade you can do to your race car in all sorts of racing aspects is your braking system. Uh, pretty much every kind of racing you're gonna do is very aggressive on brakes, right? The faster you go into a corner, uh, the faster you're gonna be, so you need those good brakes to help slow you down uh, and get you squared away for your corner. This has a nice uh, four-paw AP Racing caliper in the front. It's a low profile, so we can run our 15-inch race wheels. Uh, rally's typically all done with a 15-inch wheel. So along with the big mean caliper, uh, you can see we have a, a larger rotor here as well with very good venting in it. Uh, some racing, it's okay. You can have uh, slotted and drilled rotors. That's gonna help dissipate the heat out of, out of that rotor. Uh, but for rally, we want to prevent that because the more holes and, and slots we have is more dirt and, and rocks that can get packed in there and cause damage to your brake pads uh, and cause things to not work the way they're supposed to. So we focus more on having a very good venting system. We upgrade the wheel studs on the car. Uh, these are a little bit longer, easier to work with and much stronger than the factory. You don't want to get too far sticking out though, uh, because if you're driving by and if this is sticking out past the wheel and you hit a rock or, or anything else that could cause damage to it, you risk bending this. Uh, so we want to prevent these from sticking out past the wheel, uh, but we like them a little bit longer and stronger than they are from the factory. We run a stock inner tie rod on this car, uh, inner and outer tie rod on this car. Uh, you can upgrade these for sure, but we started finding that by upgrading those, we were breaking other more expensive and harder to change components on the car. So we just changed our driving style a little bit, hit things less, uh, and we're able to keep these in good shape uh, just the way they are. They perform very well. We do stiffen up the control arms just a little bit on the bottom. Uh, we don't wanna go too crazy with them because again, every time you make something stronger, you're moving the weak point in further and it's usually to something more expensive. So uh, we just started driving a little bit better and we were hitting less things and bending less control arms and these uh, relatively stock ones were the way to go. You can see we have these big gnarly mud flaps in the car. We're throwing a lot of rock and gravel and we don't wanna destroy the side of the car or anything underneath the car with all those rocks that we're, we're spitting out with these tires. Uh, so we put these big mud flaps on to hopefully knock down all that material before it gets back any further and can damage anything. Making our way to the back, you can see we do have this extra protective coating around this brake line. The rear end of this car is sliding sideways a lot more, so that's throwing more gravel up into the wheel well, whereas the front uh, is just spinning all the time and it's just throwing everything backwards, but it doesn't really throw a lot up into the wheel well. This is just the stock rear braking system in this car. Uh, we do upgrade the pads, but the rear calipers on this ST actually perform really well. And it's a good balance front to rear on this car when we upgrade the front APs. We also have Riger suspension in the back of this car. Uh, it's a different system here, right? You can see your spring and your shock are separate. This is a solid rear beam in this car. Uh, it's meant to flex a little bit side to side, um, but the, the packing packaging system is better in this car. Uh, to have your spring and shock separately. Some cars you can notice uh, if you're using the stock fuel filling system, uh, you might wanna put some covering to, to protect that from that gravel spray as well. Uh, you don't want gravel wearing out the metal or potentially rubber hoses you have uh, and causing it to leak fuel or not be able to fill fuel uh, at, after the next service. We have a very nice carbon Kevlar guard around our fuel tank. This is just a plastic fuel tank on this car, like most cars are from the factory nowadays. Uh, so we need something to help protect it from heat, from rocks, from gravel, from going uh, minor off and maybe uh, driving over some small trees and things. Uh, so we want to protect that the best we can from anything else that can damage it and cause us to leak fuel and uh, potentially damage our car or uh, even worse.
We do modify the exhaust in this car from the factory. The catalytic converter uh, is right behind the, the exhaust manifold up and by the engine. We want to take all that heat that the catalytic converter is building up in the engine bay and move it somewhere a little bit safer uh, and where it doesn't matter as much. So we actually run a straight pipe all the way through the car, don't tell the EPA, and we put the race cat high flow back here uh, where it doesn't matter too much if we have some heat. Exhaust size, if you're making your own custom exhaust, is something you have to be careful with. Uh, the engine works like a big air pump, the way it's designed to pull air in and push air out. On a turbo car, you can open it up a little bit more since you have that turbo helping move that air around. So you really just kind of, you can run a little bit bigger exhaust on a turbo vehicle and really let the air get out of it. Moving inside the car, we really focus on simplicity. We take out pretty much everything that you would have in here from the factory, all the interior. Uh, we strip the car right down. We have a rollover valve in the fuel venting system here. So if we do unfortunately roll this car over uh, or go off the road, it's not going to keep pumping fuel and dumping fuel all over the car while it's potentially on fire. Just a safety thing. All of the brake lines, all the fuel lines, all of the wiring, everything that we want uh, to move around the vehicle in this car is ran inside of the vehicle so that it's not underneath getting caught by rocks and trees and anything else we could potentially be driving over or even just the gravel spray. There's not a whole lot going on in the back here. Uh, we have it set up so we can put our spare tire in here. Rally drivers, they're usually carrying one, maybe two spare tires if it's a longer stage uh, and if it's a more risky stage for uh, known for getting flat tires. This is where we put the washer fluid bottle back here. Uh, easy for us to refill it during services. Uh, we also have the fire suppression bottle hidden back here. Uh, another safety thing, right? If this car, if we think we have a fire, uh, we wanna protect our investment and protect our lives. There's a button outside the car, there's a button inside the car. One little push of that while the system's armed. Uh, and there's three jets in the engine bay, two jets inside the car that's gonna blow uh, the, the mixture that they have in that fire bottle system and hopefully suppress whatever fire that may be going on. This car just has one intercom in it right now while we're only testing the car, but when it goes racing on stage, we'll usually put two in, uh, so you have a spare in case one goes down on the stage, uh, or you can have it at least set up before your next stage starts. Not a whole lot of crazy stuff going on up in here. Uh, again, it's all about simplicity. Uh, this car, it's pretty much stock, right? It's a very basic ST build. We do strip out the factory heater box. It's a big bulky unit that we don't need in there. We put a small little radiator core in there uh, with an aftermarket fan uh, that's gonna move that air up and hopefully defrost our windshield. That cuts down on a lot of weight and a lot of bulk underneath the, the, uh, the dash. Just the stock gearbox in this car. It's a six speed H pattern gearbox. Uh, we do put a quaff differential in the car to improve our performance a little bit, uh, but this stock gearbox actually performs really well if you don't want to spend the money for a sequential. We put a hydraulic handbrake in the car. It's just plumbed into that single line. The line coming from the master that's heading to the rear goes through that handbrake master cylinder, and then coming out of it, there's another T which splits and goes to each rear tire. So pulling that handbrake is actually applying the factory hydraulic brakes the same way your foot would, but with that handbrake, we can apply just the rear at one time without affecting the fronts. You can see that we have black paint on this portion of the roll cage up here. Uh, the rest of it's white. We like the white interiors. It makes it very easy to see when things are cracked or damaged uh, because it's not just replacing suspension and brakes on this car. Uh, the chassis is taking a lot of abuse as well. And if our roll cage is cracking or any body mounts, engine mounts, anything on the car is cracking, we like to be able to see it nicely. That's why we spend so much time pressure washing the car. It's worth the time taking the bumpers off the car between events, stripping it right down so you can get a good look and really see everything that you're trying to work on and make sure it's gonna make you, uh, and make sure that it's gonna help you get to the end of the next event you do. Safety is a very important thing with these cars. Uh, we're not just driving down a track, we're actually racing down very narrow dirt roads and throwing the car sideways. We have a lot of trees, a lot of rocks we can potentially be hitting, so we have to run a nice safe seat in the car. These extra wings on the top that are gonna help prevent us, uh, prevent our head from having a lot of side-to-side -side movement. Uh, we're gonna support our shoulders. We wanna have a good fitment in the seat because if we're hitting jumps or hitting anything hard, uh, we want the seat supporting all of our body. So it's very important that you find a good fitting seat before you start driving your car down rally roads. 
We have six point harnesses in these cars. Uh, very important, keeping you in that seat, keeping you in control. A lot of people, you know, they don't like a tight seat belt. Uh, they feel like it's more comfortable to leave it loose, uh, but you're not gonna get as good of performance, right? The tighter you are in that seat, A, it's safer, and B, you're gonna get a better feel of every little thing that the car is doing, and then you can react to it, uh, and you can end up driving faster because of it. So these are just a few things you can see we've done on this car. This is a very basic Fiesta ST build. Uh, we do pretty much just what we need on this car to get us going down the road with a little bit of performance. This car with a decent driver uh, will do very well in its class. If you're not a decent driver, hit up Team O'Neill, come do some of our classes, we'll make you a better driver. Uh, and then if you want one of these cars, hit us up and we can get you squared away uh, and put you in contact with how you can get one of these for yourself. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any more questions about uh, some low budget things that we do on this car uh, to help you get going down that rally road that you've been dreaming about, uh, hit us up. Um, if you have any more higher technical questions about bigger performance mods you wanna do. Also, don't be afraid to ask questions. Uh, we have myself and uh, many other people here that can answer all your questions uh, about everything you'd wanna do mechanically and set up on this car uh, to be able to drive fast and make it last the whole weekend. So thanks for watching, we'll see you next time. Hey, this is Chris Sear, CEO and partner at Team O'Neill. Thank you so much for visiting our channel. If you want to join our community, please comment, like, and subscribe. And if you want to learn more about us or book a course, please visit teamoneal.com. We look forward to connecting with you.